Hi everyone, in this video we're going to use the method of Lagrange multipliers to maximize this function under two constraints. This will be our first constraint and this will be our second constraint. So to use Lagrange multipliers, uh, whenever you have two constraints, all you do is use the following formula. So we have the gradient of f, and that should be equal to, so lambda times the gradient of g, plus mu times the gradient of h. So you solve this equation along with your two constraints. So we can call the first constraint um, g of x, y, z equal to c, and the second constraint h of x, y, z, say, equal to k. So you solve all of these equations simultaneously. So which one is g and which one is h? Well, it doesn't really matter. We'll call this one g and we'll call this one h, and you see this is equal to c, and now this is equal to k. Okay, so recall the gradient is a vector whose components are uh, partial derivatives, right? The first order partial derivatives. This will be fx, that's the partial of f with respect to x, fy, and then fz. And here we have lambda times the gradient of g, so gx, gy, gz, and then we have mu, so plus mu, times the gradient of h, which is hx, hy, hz. And of course we have our constraints, which we already have uh, up here. All right, let's go ahead and compute these partial derivatives. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x, that means we uh, hold all the other variables constant. constant. The derivative of x is 1, so we're left with yz. When we're computing f sub y, the derivative of y is 1, so we're left with xz, right? xz is a constant. And we're, when we're computing f sub z, uh, the derivative of z is 1, so we're left with xy. This is equal to lambda. The situation is really easy for g, right? The partial derivative of g with respect to x is 1. The other derivative will be 0, so it's just 1. GY is also 1, and then GZ is also 1 as well, right? Because when you take the partial with respect to X, you get 1, and the other derivatives are 0. When you take the partial with respect to Y, you get 1 for the Y, the other ones are 0. And then when you do it with respect to Z, the derivative of Z is 1, and the other ones are 0. Plus mu, HX is 1, HY is negative 1, right? And then um, these will be 0 in that case. And then the last one is 1. All right, we can clean this up. Um, you can skip some steps here. This will be lambda plus mu, right? You can combine these. Lambda plus mu, so skip the step here. Right, I, I first wrote it, I'm first writing it like this in my head. It's the step I'm skipping. I guess I didn't skip it anymore. And then you add them, so you get lambda plus mu, okay? And the next one will be uh, lambda minus mu and the last one uh, will be lambda plus mu. So these vectors are equal, so we can set each of the components equal. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have yz equals lambda plus mu. Then we have um, xz equals uh, lambda minus mu. And last but not least, we have uh, xy and that's equal to uh, lambda plus mu. So what do we do next? Well, there's infinitely many ways to proceed. Uh, I am thinking um, that we can notice uh, that yz is equal to lambda plus mu, and xy is equal to lambda plus mu. So via just you know, matching, we have that yz is equal to xy. If we subtract xy from both sides, we get yz minus xy equals 0. We can factor out a y, so we get parentheses z minus x, parentheses equal to 0. Whenever you have a product equal to 0, you can set each factor equal to 0, so we get y equals 0, z minus x equals 0. So here we get z equals x. So one of these conditions, or both, will hold. Notice that y cannot be 0, so check this out. If y is 0, if you go to your constraints, you get x plus z equals 28. And if you go up here, you get x plus z equals 8. 
that means that 28 is equal to 8, which is impossible. So y cannot be 0. So z must be equal to x. So again, now we maybe perhaps we should go to our constraints. Uh, let's rewrite our constraints here. So we have x plus y plus z equals 28. And then we have x minus y uh, plus z equals 8. Okay. If we add these equations, we end up with 2x plus 2z equals 36. And I suppose that x is equal to z, so we can write this as 2x plus 2x equals 36. So 4x equals 36. That means that x is equal to 9. Boom, we have a number. So again, um, we first noticed that yz was equal to xy. We got two possibilities, 0 or z equals x. If y is 0, you go back to your constraints. You end up with x plus z equals 28, x plus z equals 8. That means 28 is equal to 8. That's impossible. So z must be equal to x. And then again, you just write your constraints down. We eliminate the y and replace z with x, and we end up with x equals 9. Now that we know x, we also know z because z is equal to x, so z is also equal to 9. And now we just need um, y. So I suppose we can use uh, any uh, of the equations that we have. I'm going to scroll down, give us some more room here. So we have x equals 9. Let's recap. z equals 9. And uh, we have this equation here, x plus y plus z equals 28. That's one of our constraints. Let's plug everything in and solve for y. So we have 9 plus y plus 9 equals 28. So y plus 18 equals 28. So y is equal to 10. So now we have x, y, and z, and so life is good. All we do now is plug it back into our original function. The original function was x, y, z. So now we just plug these numbers back in, and that's going to give us uh, the maximum. So f of, let's see, x is 9, y is 10, z was 9. That's going to be 9 times 10 times 9. That's a big number. Uh, I'm just going to... I'm pretty sure it's 810, but let's see, 81 times 10, yeah, duh, 810, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I put it in my calculator just to be sure, right? You made it, we made it this far, um, so yeah, pretty, pretty interesting problem. I hope it's been helpful. That's it.